Hi everybody, this is Lisa Holdener and I wanted to share with you how easy it can be to update a class website once you have a template. So I wanted to share this template with you. I had a few people ask if I could teach them how to do this. So um, these are for the Fairmont classrooms and I hope that I explain it um, clearly and well enough for you to be able to get started um, on this for your classroom. So what we're looking at here is the basically the home page and this is the home page for my classroom. Um, all you would need to do is go in here and change your class name. You can click on it, change it, just type it to whatever it is. Right, we could do um, anything here, whatever your class name is. You can also change this. This is just text. Highlight it, change it to whatever you want. Uh, you could change if you want it italicized, if you want it bold. Um, and you could even change the font there. Super easy. Now, if you want to change these icons, which the icons that I give you are not going to look like these little dot dudes. These dot dudes can be purchased on Teachers Pay Teachers. They're one of my favorite um, icons that I use throughout the year in my classroom. Um, but all this is, is this is basically an easy way for your parents or your students to go to the different pages on your website. They can use these here or there's going to be tabs up at the top. You'll have all of these tabs. You can customize them um, how you would like. Um, but anyway, right here, like if you wanted to change this icon, um, you're just going to click on it and you're going to see that I use this throughout my web page. Um, you can just click on the icon so these options come up. You can hit replace image and then upload just like that. And then that will pull anything um, from anywhere that you want. I usually select, um, I usually, what I do here for my different logos is I have a logos file. And all you need to do to do this is if you go in and you create a blank um, slideshow or slides, doc slides, you go here and you make sure that the page setup I need to move this. The page setup is a square, right? You can customize it. I always set it to custom and I have it as 13 by 13 inches. So make sure you customize it. Otherwise it's going to be that rectangle that you always see when you first open up your slideshows or your slide documents. So you're going to um, create a custom square. And what you need to do is after you create the icon that you want using whatever graphics that you want you need to save it or download it actually as a png i'm going to do this one now so you can see so it came up down here so when you are on your website or your web page and you're customizing it you can come here ah excuse me upload and you'll see it right here you're going to open it and it's going to change it for you. Okay, so the I'm going to give you these, right, these ones right here. You could change it if you like the color or whatnot um, to match your presentation. Now, to make this a clickable link, <clears throat> you can click on right here. And I have it set to the writing page because I have a writing page. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. I also have this text as a link as well. So you, if you don't want writing first or if you want science or whatnot here, you would put a little science icon, you would type in the word science, and then when you're here and it's selected, you would click this button to insert link and you can pick from one of the pages. Um, let's do this. Let's just show you that you want this to be science. Click on it, insert the link. And you can pick any of these pages that are already, should be already listed. And you would just click this button here. And then when your parents or your, um, I'm going to put this back to writing, your parents or your students click on it, it will take you to that page. So I'm going to click on writing, insert link, and I should have a writing page right there. That makes it a link. This is already a link because you did the same thing here. Okay. 
Um, these here are tabs. You can have these or you don't have to. Um, everything will be included, whatever page you that I have given you, which is all of them, she'll be up here. So if you don't want to have this at all, you don't have to because they you can they can just use this top toolbar. I have young ones, so icons are important for me. Um, these here are tabs, and you can just add them. All right, let's see, slide stuff, buttons, they're buttons. Click this and you could put whatever ones you want there, click on it and make it a link. So right now I have these virtual library clever portal. So if they click on it, it'll take them to our seesaw page. It'll take them to our calming corner, which is also up here. I just only, I added these because I didn't have any more room for these icons here. Um, whenever you want to add information to your page, like I wanted to show my kids and my parents what we're working on in class right now. So I just use this side a lot. I clicked on this, I put in a picture, and then I typed in my text. And you can easily, again, if you regularly change out whatever focus you're doing on in your classroom, you just um, click on it, ah, and you would change it. You would upload a different image and type in different text. Always save, save things either as a JPEG or a PNG, so it's easy for you to do in the future. Um, this is, we're still on the home page. This is my classroom news. This is very convenient um, for the parents to see what's going on during the week. I have my spelling words here, as you could see, our learning focus. Um, and what I do with this is I have another Google slide document and I update it every week. Super duper easy. Um, change the date, change the events, change the spelling words, and then again I save it or download it, sorry not save it, it saves automatically, as a PNG image. And then what you would do is each week you would come in here, after you've saved it as a PNG image, uh, once again you click on there, replace the image, and upload it with your new document. So there's not a lot of work there. You just need to go in and you need to make your updates in here, save it as a PM, PNG image, and then replace this image with your new one. Okay, um, hopefully that you understand um, how to do that. You can ask me if you need further um, explanation. I always have our daily schedule. Um, this is something you can do here for the parents. This is a footer. Obviously, you would want to change this picture to have your picture with your name, your introduction, and whatever um, little fun tools you have there. You would change your information here. It's easy. Just click on Edit Footer. You can delete these if you don't have these badges yet. Delete them and customize it to fit your needs. Now, this is a library. This is the sec first second page. Home page is the first. The library is something that I update seasonally. Uh, right now I have in a winter library. Again, this goes back to having a Google slide, creating a Bitmoji background. Um, I use this, all I do is, well, this is kind of complex, but what I can do here is change out the books and just create links in them. So to change out the books, I usually just go into Google, type in a word, or book title. I usually use images. Like if I wanted to add Santa's Big Night, I would double click on it, save image as. I just write Santa. It's going to save it to my desktop. So then when I come back into here, um, you would just double click on this, replace image, upload from computer. It's on my desktop pick Santa's Big Night. And then right now it has a link from the last book that was there. I had Sulwe there. You want to break that link and then you're going to create another link. Just go to YouTube. See if there's a read aloud. You probably want to do this first before you decide that you want that book in there. Make sure there's a read aloud for it. Santa's Big Night. There it is click on it. I'm not doing that. Um, you click share and you just copy the link. So then you go back into your template and right here, oh sorry, got to go back into here. 
you would click this insert link and you paste it down. So now when your students click on this book, it'll take them to this read aloud. You don't have to do this. This is not necessary. Um, my students like to come here when they have free time on the computer. They always come to our class website and then they listen to some of the books that we have already read that they've really, really liked or books that we haven't read. Now, the trick here is that you have to update this file for it to reflect in your classroom. Okay, so like if I were to, let's see, there's usually a refresh button. Mm, I don't know where it is. I, oh, I haven't updated this yet. So this will appear as the new book that we put there. So I do this probably once every two months um, for the students. And then I just go in and change this, change the banner, change the window to a fall theme or change the pillows or whatever. Anyway, um, next. So I could, I can actually give you some more information about the virtual uh, library if you want to do it. You, like I said, you don't have to. I have a Hanukkah theme library, which I actually got from somebody else online. They can click on any of these books. So it's Hanukkah. They have a candy cane theme library. Um, they just have fun going in and picking whatever books that they want uh, to read. The next page would be reading. This is something that I update regularly. I have our read alouds for the week here and all of the previous weeks. Now, this may seem like it's a lot of work to do. It's really, really not. Um, it's loading slow because I have a lot of tabs open. But I just updated this for this upcoming week. And let's say that I want to do this next week. So instead of creating a whole new header, etc., what I do is I usually click this one here. And I click it twice because I usually do six read alouds. This is going to put it at the bottom. So I need to bring it up to the top. Sorry, we've done a lot of reading. <clears throat> you drag it up to the top and you're going to put it under this week's read aloud. Now, instead of bringing the other one up, I'm just going to duplicate this. So now I have a clean slate for this week's book and I'm just going to move previous week's book up to here. So this includes what I had had last week and all of the previous weeks. And what you do here is just like you did on the virtual library. You go into Google, you type whatever book you're going to be adding. I've already done this for one of the stories, I believe. We can add actually the Santa's Big Night. So let's go here. So you just click your add button, upload. I'm just going to use this one because we've already done it and open. I get rid of this. It's unnecessary. You can have it there. And then this button right here, make sure that the whole book is shown. So I do that with each one. So when you're creating your plans for the week, if you save all the books, if you go here and just type in the book names, you click on here, double click, save image as, I'm just going to put mouse, save. So I would do that with five or six books really quickly based on what I'm reading. And then I would just add them in here. Upload, Santa Mouse. Then make sure that the whole thing is shown. I erase this, erase this. And you do that with your six or your five or your four or your 10 books that you're going to read for the week. So this button right here is just a duplicate section. You could just do that and it'll make the same thing. These I don't put as links because we read them in class. I use the virtual library for that. Um, so there's no linking or anything like that. If you want to do a quick um, summary of the book, you can, depending on what grade you're doing. So that's super easy for you to adjust every week. Um, language arts, I have a language arts section. This would vary based on what grade you teach. I have letter tiles. Again, I just use this layout right here. I did a screenshot of this when I got to this website and then typed up some information. What I'm going to show you now is I'm going to add a um, flashcard section on here specifically for the units out of treasures that we have. And this will show you 
um, how to how you would do your Google Bitmoji um, background. Now this is just a slide. It doesn't appear on your website on its own. So you have to go in and turn it into something else. So again, this applies for your flashcards or whatever you want to customize for your class or your Bitmoji classroom once you design it. So what you'll need to do once you're finished here is you're going to go to file, publish to the web. So you're going to click that and what you're going to want is, let's see these options every three seconds. These are flashcards, so I'm going to do it every second. Start slideshow as soon as the player loads. No, restart slideshow after the last slide. Yes. So you're going to hit embed. We want, let's just do small for now. Okay. We're going to hit publish. You're going to hit OK. Now you're going to need to copy this. So Command C or whatever you do on your computer and close it out. <clears throat> You're going to go back to your template and we since we hit embed we're going to click this because we're going to put in a new section so you hit embed embed code and then you're going to paste it now i know that that's too big so i'm going to go 400 300 i think is what i do and hit next hit insert it automatically puts it down at the bottom i don't want it at the bottom I want it at the top because it's going to be new. See, this is kind of small. So you can make this smaller so it fits. I'm going to bring it to the middle. Now, this appears on your website. It's a working document. Okay. Be you had to publish it to the web, though, for you to be able to do this. Okay. So it's adding it right now. And then what it will do is your students will be able to come in here on your website and click this arrow. It's still loading um, and go through the, the words. Let's see if I can publish this. This should be able to work. So let's take a look to see if that worked. See, I would want it a little bigger. And then they come in here and they can practice their words. A, as, for, with, jump. And I have this all, I did this all the way through unit six. So it, if you have a um, Google slide presentation that you created last year um, for virtual learning, you just need to save it, not save it, I keep saying save it, sorry. You need to publish it to the web and then put it on your page. If again, if you need help doing that, I can help you do that. But that's how you add in a Google slide presentation onto your website. And then if you needed to add something to it, if you add it here on the original um, slide document, it's going to update in here so you don't have to do anything. Next, writing. Um, this is a page that you can delete altogether. Um, the first grade team last year put together a writing video that showed parents how to help their student or their child actually with their expository opinion and narrative writing. Um, and then I also put a link here to download the presentation. And then these are just images, PNGs that I found off the web and put them up here to remind parents what to focus on if their students or their children are writing at home. Uh, you also have a math page. These are just math tools. Again, these are just images that I saved as a PNG and then turned them into a link. That's it. I went to Toy Theater, found the images, took either a screenshot, I think a screenshot of these, saved them as a PNG, and then uploaded them. So these are all going to be on there. You don't have to make too many changes to that. I guess that depends on what grade you're teaching. Um, the science of kindness. I have a kindness tab. You do not have to have that if you don't want. I usually try to take as many pictures as I can when we're doing science. The kids really enjoy seeing pictures of themselves on the class page. Um, it really helps with
um, creating a community and it drives them to the page. And that's what you want because then they have all of these resources right at their fingertips for books and math tools and all of those things. So think about that when you're giving lessons, um, take those pictures and put them up. Calming corner, hopefully you wouldn't have to do too much to this at all. Students can come here. There's breathing techniques, relaxing ocean video. Um, you would want to change this. This is again, just an image. I downloaded from the Bitmoji screen a picture of myself. I can do this one. I think I can drag it in. Oh, maybe I cannot. So you would just save it. You would double click on it like this. Save image as. Mm, I don't need to change the name. And then I would click on this. Dang it. Here, upload. So it all goes back to the PNGs, right? You're going to want to change mine out with your own. This is a Bitmoji. I think you can just put it as an extension. All right, so I think that that is it. I'm gonna change all of these so they're not the dot dudes because I don't want to get in trouble for sharing that. Um, so I'll change these for you. You can change any of this or delete it. Take it out, change the picture, put your classroom news here. Just remember you have to save it as a JPEG or a PNG. PNG tends to show up better. Um, but let me know if you have any questions. Um, and here's a list of your pages right here. So if you don't want your page to show up here, like if I don't want science to show up there, I would just click here, hide from navigation. And you still have it, it's just not showing right now. Like I have other pages here that are not showing. Like it's not showing PE right now, but I still have it and it's not showing my last year because um, I didn't want to get rid of it, but I still have it. So you don't really want to delete pages, just hide them from your navigation. Anyhow, I hope that helped. I know it's a little overwhelming, but pick and choose what you want. Obviously, if you want to get rid of, rid of the virtual library um, and tackle that later, I'm more than welcome or more than happy to help you do that. Um, so Merry Christmas. I hope this helps.